All right, we're going to look at estimating square roots without a calculator. Now, if you'll notice this here, there are items which and concepts that you need to learn, but you don't get to use a calculator with. Now, let's review a few definitions. The first one is a perfect square. A perfect square is the square of a whole, oops, sorry, of a whole number. The number 16 is going to be a perfect square because 4 squared, which 4 is a whole number, is 16. Now, a square root is a number that when multiplied by itself equals a given number. And then we're going to use the symbol of the radical. So, if you do the square root of 9, that equals 3. So, 3 is the, your root. Now, you can use these perfect squares to help estimate non-perfect squares. And that's what we're going to do today. So let's look at estimating uh, square roots. Now, this one, I want to estimate the square root of 12 to the nearest hundredth. Now, there's about six steps that we need to do. The first step is to use those perfect squares that I talked about in the previous slide to actually kind of figure out which two integers that it's going to fall between. So you're going to find the perfect squares closest to the square root of 12. Well, 9 is a perfect square. And on the other side, 16 is the next perfect square. So then step two says to take the square root of the perfect squares. The square root of 9 is 3, the square root of 16 is 4. So basically our answer is going to be between the integers of 3 and 4. Step three says to find the difference between the two perfect squares. And this is going to be your denominator. So we're going to make a fraction. So I'm going to do 16 minus 9, and that's 7. So that goes down in my denominator. Step 4 says to find the difference between the square root you're estimating, so this 12, and the smaller perfect square, and that's 9. So this is going to be our numerator. So we have 12 minus 9, which equals 3, and that's going to go up top of our fraction. The step 5 says to divide your answer from steps 3 and 4. So I'm going to do 3 divided by 7. Now, you will have to do long division here, but remember the rule, the top dog gets the house. That means that when you're doing this, the top dog, which is my 3, gets my little house, and the other one goes on the outside. So when you divide 3 by 7, you're going to get 0.428. Since I'm only going to the hundredth place, that's two decimal places, I just need to divide out three decimal places so that I know if I need to round that hundredth place up or not. So now in the last step, we're going to combine our information from step two and our decimal that we just did in step five for our estimate. So in step two, we said that our answer is going to be between three and four. That means our answer is going to be 3 point something. So I'm going to take my 3, and then I'm going to use my decimal 4.28 to approximate my square root. Now since this 8 is 5 or greater, I round that 2 up to a 3. So my estimate is going to be 3.43. Okay, another example. We're going to estimate the square root of 45 to the nearest hundredth. Again, step one, find the two perfect squares that are between those two numbers. So the smallest one's going to be 36, the largest is 49. Step two is to find those perfect squares. The square root, or the square root of those perfect squares. The square root of 36 is 6, and the square root of 49 is 7. So that means my number is going to be between 6 and 7, 6 point something. Now I'm going to take the largest perfect square and subtract the smallest perfect square. So I do 49 minus 36, and that's 13. So that is step 3, and that's my denominator. Step 4, you're going to take the square that you're trying to find and subtract the smallest perfect square. So you're going to do 45 minus 36, and that's 9. That's your numerator. Notice in both of these, each time you're using the smallest perfect square you're subtracting it from. Okay, so step 5, we're going to take 9 and divide it by 13. So over here, remember, 
top dog gets the house. Your nine is your top dog. It gets my division house right there. Thirteen goes on the outside. Now we know that thirteen does not go into nine. So what I have to do is put a decimal, put a zero up top, move your decimal up, and add a zero. Thirteen does go into ninety. It goes into it six times. Six times thirteen is seventy-eight. So I'm going to do 90 minus 78, that gives me 12. Now I know 13 doesn't go into 12, so I need to add another 0 and bring it down. 13 does go into 120, and that's 9 times. So 13 times 9 is 117. I'm going to subtract the 2, go one more. So 3 is left, add another 0, drop it down. 13 goes into 30 2 times. And 2 times 13 is 26, so I subtract and I have 4 left over. Now, I don't have to go any further than that because of the fact that I only need two decimal places. I need that third one to determine if I round that 9 up or not. Notice this is a 2, it's not 5 or greater, so I leave it as 0.69. I round it to the nearest hundredth. Now that I have the decimal end of it, I go to step 6 where I take this decimal end of it and the fact that I know it's 6 point something because it's between 6 and 7 and I put them together to get my estimate of the square root of 45 to be approximately, that's what these signs are, 6.69. Okay, let's do one last problem, a practice problem. So we are going to estimate the square root of 113 to the nearest hundred. Again, two decimal places. The first thing I did, bang the two perfect squares that it falls between, and that is a hundred and one twenty-one. Second step, find those square roots, which is ten and eleven. So that means in between this square root of one thirteen is going to be ten point something. Okay? Step three, I'm going to take the largest square root, perfect square, subtract it from the smallest. So I'm going to do a hunt, whoops, I'm going to do 121 minus 100, and that's going to give me 21. This is going to be my denominator. Okay, step four, I subtract the one I'm estimating from the smallest perfect square. 113 minus 100 equals 13, and this is going to be your numerator. Okay, now I got to divide. Now, if you notice, you got to do top dog gets the house. So, there's my house. My top dog, my 13, gets the house. 21 goes on the outside. All right, does 21 go into 13? Well, no, we know that for a fact. So I add a zero, add a decimal as well. Okay, does 21 go into 130? Yes, it does. Now, we know 20 goes into 100 five times. And probably 20 into 130 goes six times. So I'm assuming, kind of guesstimating that 21 is going to go into 130 six times. So, 6 times 21, we got 6 times 1 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12, so it's 126. I subtract, and I get 4 here. I add another 0, bring it down, so now I have 40. 21 into 40 only goes one time. So I put my 1, subtract 21, I've got, since that's 0, I've got to carry, and I get 19. Now 21 doesn't go into 19, so i got to add my 0 again and do 20 into 190. Well, we said 21 goes into 136 times. I'm going to think it probably goes into 190 hmm, about 8 times. So if I do 8 times 21, I'm going to get 168, but I think I could add another 21 to that. So instead of 8 times, let's try 9 times. So 
So 21 times 9, 9 times 1 is 9, 9 times 2 is 18. Okay, and I'm left with 1 left over. Now I can keep going because this will keep going and going, but I need to round to the nearest hundredth. So that means that's going to give me 0 0.6. That 1 is going to become 2 because I have 9 there and that 9 is greater than 5. So my decimal is 0 0.62. So step 5, basically I did 13 divided by 21, okay, which is approximately, since we rounded, 0.62. Now step 6 means I need to estimate and put everything together so that 113 is, remember, between 10 and 11. So we set up here we're 10 point something. So I'm going to do 10 point and then add my decimal, 62. And there's your approximation.